Hiya guys, West Country Explorer here. I'm in Seaton at the moment. I've just parked up in the long stay car park by the Seaton tramway terminal. It's on winter pricing plans at the moment. So 50p for half hour, pound for an hour, £1.50 for an hour and a half, or £2 until midnight. So I've put me two quid in and got a ticket up till midnight. Uh, the reason I'm in Seaton is because I'm going to be walking part of the um, southwest coast path the section between Seaton and Lyme Regis now the whole route the southwest coast path route it runs from Minehead uh, so I've got the sun in my eye a bit got, runs from Minehead up in um, Somerset area through North Dorset through Cornwall I've said it again and I Dorset not North Dorset that's where I live <laughs> Run through Somerset, through North Devon even, into Cornwall, around the Cornish coast, down into South Devon, and I think it ends up in Poole, in um, South Dorset. But like I said, I'm going to be walking the Seaton to Lyme Regis section. Look, as you can see, I'm um, Seaton Tramway there. Yeah, so I'm going to go to Lyme Regis, through the undercliffs, I'm going to meet up with my parents, have a bit of a catch up with them, and then what I'm going to do is because bus timetables along the along this area are a bit infrequent, so my dad he's kindly agreed to give me a lift back to Seaton so I can pick up Amy's car and then drive back. So, guys, I'm going to go for a lovely, lovely walk through the undercliffs. Fancy joining me? Of course you do guys, you want to join me? Come along and see what beautiful scenery there is along this stretch of the South West Coast Park. Got the uh, Seaton Town Centre up that way. Not a bad little town Seaton from what I remember. It's been quite a while since I've been there. But what I'm going to do is, got the, see the cliffs along there so at some point I'm going to be getting along the undercliffs. Well, here we are at Seaton Seafront. Lovely sunny day. The sea is calm as anything. Absolutely calm as anything. Oh man, this is beautiful, this is. Well, I know this stretch of the coastline does get an all quite a fair bit of like erosion, like the cliff top collapsing. It is, uh, happens quite a bit between Lyme Regis and Charmer, sort of more so that end. And there's always a lot of landslips in the West Bay area where Amy and I were a week or so back. I mean, oh, quite on a semi-regular basis. Like, I've got friends who still live in the, the Bridport West Bay area. I've got them on Facebook as well. So on a semi-regular basis, articles, I see them posting, like, news articles on Facebook about another landslip in West Bay. Yeah, so this area of the coastline, I think like a lot of the British coastline, suffering from coastal erosion, landslips, all the rest. So obviously the uh, footpath does get regularly diverted a bit more inland. Yeah, the old coast path sips away. That's where we redirect it and all the rest. Yeah. All the little boats. This is the uh, Axmouth area. You'll see why in a minute. Why it's called that. Axmouth, because we're at the mouth of the River Axe. Yeah, there's a sea over there. River Axe there going inland. 
So yeah guys, this is an old bridge. There's a newer road. Take you over this way guys. Why go over a new bridge when you can go over an old bridge, eh guys? Isn't that right? Can't really angle like far enough to see show you the bridge. Oh, guys! Well, I think of it, guys. So sort of over there, that bit of the beach, I spotted online. It's a bit of a naturist beach. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Oh, there's a new road. Oh, see if I can angle that a bit. Oh, you can see a bit of the old bridge. There you go, guys. Yeah. Right, find my way to the start of the footpath. I haven't got a map with me, but it's all pretty straightforward this bit, so I should be all right. I hope that that car go by. There you go, coast path. We're all good. Oh, actually, tell you what, guys. Oh, tell you what. I'll bring you guys down here. There you go. Proper view of the old bridge. There you go, guys. Happy days. The old bridge. New bridge. Nice bridge. Ugly bridge. Oh, the building site. <laughs> Alright, so this road takes you through the village of Axmouth, connects up with a A3052, which is the coastal road, the coastal route from Lyme Regis to Axeter. So a bit of local info for you. But yeah. So it's about there we go, coast path up here. About seven and a half miles to Lyme Regis. So up this bit. Yeah, so a little bit inland at the moment, but hey, that's all right. That's no problems. Uh, it's been many, many years since I've walked this stretch of the coast path. Uh, I think uh, I did it a couple of times back in the 90s. At the time, parents and I used to come down this way for holidays to Lyme Regis. We were living up in the South Gloucestershire area at the time. I had a started caravan just outside Lyme. Recording and talking while walking uphill, maybe not such a good combination. Yeah, but so sorry for the heavy breathing. Yeah, my parents had a started caravan in Lyme Re sort of outside Lyme Reed, yes. Because they were self-employed and couldn't afford to take like one two week holiday so they had a static caravan for weekend getaways and it that was from about 89 90 up to 96 i'm going to stop recording this i can wait till i get to flatland uh, that's a bit better so i've just come through the golf course and that yeah two or three gentlemen out playing golf today so not a game i'm interested in but hey if you want to play golf that's fair enough nothing wrong with that but anyway yeah what was i saying so yeah i'd uh started caravan down in the lime area for most of the uh, early mid 90s and then uh, a couple of times i did the coast path here during that period and obviously my parents and I moved down to Lyme in the, about 96 and I think the last time I walked the coast path was about 2010 something like that so it's been a good sort of 14 15 years or so since I last walked it so I can't really remember it so it'll be like walking it again for the first time so it's all good all good 
Uh, so we're not on the actual undercliff bit yet. That's uh, so more the top of the cliff. This looks like an old farm trackway, this I'd say. Oh. So what I don't often see. Gate with a postcode on it. Right, time to lean against the farm gate, guys. You know the drill. See a farm gate. Stop it in, just admire the views. And there's certainly some nice views to see from here. Happy days. There you go. After four hours, mm. right? This is the footpath to Axmouth. Well, we're not going that way today, guys. No, not that way. We're going along the terrain that can be difficult and walking arduous. We're going along this way. And there's some interesting little bits and bobs along the route. I'm looking forward to getting to the halfway point. I know what's at the halfway point. You guys will have to wait until a little bit later on in the video to find out. Suffice to say, at the halfway point, I'll be stopping for a bit of a lunch break. It'll be an interesting place to stop. At least for me, anyway, guys. Oh, we're now making our way through the fields, as you can see. We'll soon be going down into the undercliffs. Well, good, one nice thing about these under, this undercliff walk is that it's um, got its own little sort of microclimate area the more I think about it the more I can sort of vaguely remember little bits and pieces of the walk only vaguely and the vague recollections I've got is yeah some lovely bits now, like I said at the start of the video the whole section of the southwest coast path walk runs from Minehead down to I think Pool area, and it's um I think it's something like 650 miles in all, something like that. Uh, it's one of these walks. It can be done in sections, and that's a you can like sort of take like the old sort of weekend off here and there or stuff like that, and just slowly but surely do it in sections over time uh, one thing i'd quite like to do and i've half thought about every now and again is it'd be quite nice if i had the time just take a big chunk of time off and just do the walk in one go so i mean i think i'd probably i'd probably need something like a couple of months something like that to do it all in yeah so but that, that's something i'd love to do just like get up to my have a day to get up to my ned and then just do the whole walk in one go and then a day to come home that'd be proper proper good super smashing great oh we're slowly slowly coming down into the undercliff section Look at that, the sea's so calm. Very nice. I've got to be a little bit careful recording while walking because it's still a little bit muddy underfoot. So I don't want to fall or anything, slip while recording. Well, I did some quick calculations. And this is based on the walk being 650 miles. So I think that's how the how long the whole route is. 
but if you do 15 miles a day every single day plus a day either side for getting to the start point and then getting back home again from the end point it would take the best part of seven weeks to do it all in one go so i reckon i should tell you what guys i'm just going to swivel you around a second yeah so i i oops <laughs> almost tripped there yeah so i reckon if i'm going to do it in one go i'm going to allow myself eight weeks that way if there's days when i want to do a bit less than 15 miles in a day or days where I just want a day off and a rest day exploring wherever I am, like a town or whatever. And so I've got the time to do it. And if I end up sort of doing more than 15 miles in a day and I sort of get a head of schedule and all the rest, or even if I just keep the schedule, sort of keep hitting the 15 mile a day mark, I've got a bit of time at the end just to chill out and recover and relax from the long walk. So yeah. But not so much I think I've the only way I'll actually get around to doing it if I is if I work towards it and actually make a proper definite plan. So yeah. I mean it's not gonna happen this year, but at some point in the future I'm definitely gonna do the southwest coast path in one go. I've been thinking half half thinking about it for so long now, it's about time I pulled my finger out and actually did it. A little bench here. I think that might have been one of the original routes of a footpath. Got going on here now. I think that might have been an original route that's now no longer accessible because of land slips and all the rest. Yeah, you can see where there's been land slips and all the rest. See a bit of a, a cliff edge there. All this land is sort of slipped away a little bit. Now the sea's all down there. Here we've got a little map. Feel free to pause if you want to read. There we are. So we're just just getting into the pr proper parts of it. The proper parts of the on the cliff section. Right, so I've just uh, it's coming all that down here through that. Yeah. There you go. Oop, oop, uh. oop, as you can see, this walk is not disabled friendly. Careful of me stepping. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely. If it's not steps down, it steps up. Well, I'll tell you something, guys. Who needs a gym membership when you're doing walks like this? Uh, it's a bit of the sea out there, twirls all you around, ah, very nice. Right, so this bit here is known as Goat Island. 
We're about two miles away from Seaton, five miles away from Lyme. Uh, I have taken a photo of this, which I'm going to put on my Facebook page. So you can always go and read it. But basically, it was a uh, back on Christmas Eve 1839, there was a landslip. And this this a bit effectively became a, like an like an island. And there was um there was still harvest like wheat and all that on the island, which did eventually get harvested, I think. I'm sure I read somewhere many years ago that when the landslip happened and this was effectively created as an island, effectively became a, like an island, there was goats on it. Hence the reason why it's called Goat Island. I'm sure I read that somewhere many, many years ago that there was goats on it when it happened. Obviously, if you sort of carry on up there, you can get pretty close to the cliff edge. I don't think I'm gonna do that today. Actually, shall I? I'll, I'll see how close I can get. There you go, guys. Uh, As you can see, it's a quite a steep, nasty drop. Wouldn't want to fall down there. So, if you can see that, guys, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I did come close because look at that, guys. You can see the remains of some building down there. I'm not sure offhand what that building would have been. It would have been a big building at one one point. Obviously, as a result of landslips and all the rest, it's just a, a ruin now. Ah. There you go. Just through there, through the trees, you can make out the cliff face. Yeah, so yeah. Just goes to show how how wide the undercliff area is. I mean, the sea's sort of all out to there. What guys, yeah, oh, hang on, ooh. Sheep was 50 yards. Oh, 
Oh, let's zoom back out. Right? Oh. Right, let's go and have a look at this sheep wash. Oh. Look at this. Guys, I'd completely forgotten all about this. Sheep wash built in approximately 1800. Uh, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to take a photo of this as well, this board, and put it on my Facebook page, so and um, so you can have a read of that if you want. Guys, if you haven't already subscribed to my Facebook page, West Country Explorer on Facebook. That's if you do Facebook. Uh, nowadays, I put a load of photos there and stuff like that. But look at this. It's a sheep wash. <laughs> to think that it survived all the landslips and all the rest. So there you go, there. This is a good little spot for like having a having a picnic, having a little stop, drink, coffee break, food. I tell you something, guys. If and when I do the whole coast path walk, if I'm ever coming through this area at the end of a day, it's getting close to the dinner time, close to the stopping, this would make a good spot to put my tent up and camp out for the night. Oh, guys, yes. I've got to try and remember this for if and when I do the, like, do the coast path walk in one go. Mind you, it'll be a few years by the time I get round to it, so by the time I do it, I'll have probably forgotten about this site. Either that will probably be passing by midday. Bit of a view of the cliff face there. Lots of bird song here. Still a little bit nippy walking along here. The sun isn't quite penetrating down here. Ah. Some parts where, I'm sort of where the sun is penetrating gets quite warm. But I'm now going for a section where it's still a little bit nippy. Look at that, lovely views. Look at that there. Golden cap. And where is it, where is it? Just sort of about there. That's West Bay Beach. That's um, Cliff by West Bay. Ah. <laughs> this is a... Definitely a footpath for the for the more adventurous people, I'd say. There we go, a little bit of an information board about Roosden and Pumping Station. And there we have the chimney. The chimney of what was once a uh, coal-fired steam pumping station. Like I said, I've taken a photo of it, which I'll put on my Facebook page. But this used to pump water from a, what was it, let's have a look see. Uh, from a nearby spring. It used to be pumped up to the mansion on the Rusin Estate. And this is all that's left of it, this chimney.
can just see the sea out there. Now, by the uh, Roosden sort of pumping station chimney, there is a little path that comes off of the coastal path, and there's a gate with a sign on it saying sort of private, no access without admittance. I confess I've come along here without admittance. So, officially I shouldn't have been here. I think if I, I think if you get admittance, you can come along. And it's saying about how this uh, pathway's prone to slip in and all the rest, so use it at your own risk. But I'm coming this way because I'm pretty sure it can get me down to the beach and that's what I want to do. That, I should have got a, like got admittance first off. So don't do what I'm doing, just coming here without admittance. Get that first. If you're doing what I'm doing, coming here about getting it first because you're taking a risk upon yourself which is what I'm doing, I'm taking a risk upon myself I think I can actually, can I get to the seafront? Uh, maybe not I'm not sure I can actually Oh, I was thinking this would be a route down to the beach but maybe not Oh well. I'll carry on along this route anyway. If it gets to the beach, that's a bonus. If not, it doesn't. I think this would have been a one of the old routes of the coast path. But due to landslips, they've obviously sort of moved the path inland a bit. Coming through this section, it's a lovely wooded area. So quiet, so lovely. It has, it has brought me out to the beach. This is lovely. Well, this little section of the beach. Lovely, lovely. So it was worth it. I got to the beach. This is what I wanted to do. So retrace this path back to the um, Roosden pumping place, pumping station, and sort of rejoin the footpath, the coast path. So there you go, guys. A little little bit of the sea from the beach all good fun yeah so that's the sign that i went past to get to the beach so obviously if you get authorization you can 
officially go through there. So it's not saying don't go at all, it's just saying get authorization first and go along at your own risk because it's a bit dodgy. Ah. Well, it's quite a quite a clear open area. It's sort of not hemmed in by an undergrowth and that. Uh, this is a proper little track along here. Like right, coast path in here. Ah, oh, steps everywhere. Up and down, up and down. Lots of steps. Oh dear. But the scenery makes it worth it. Definitely makes it worth it. Oh, oh man. Oh. Stop down now. At this point, there is a permissive path, if you see here, oh, oh. there is a permissive path that goes inland a bit, up there like that. But I'm going to follow the coast path bit through Pinhay Cliffs. Ah. So at this point, you've got a bit of a choice. I'll go inland a bit or carry on the coast path. We all know which one I'm doing. That's right, the coast path bit. Sounds like there's quite a bit of a waterfall somewhere in that undergrowth. It's in there somewhere, I can hear it. They go two and a half miles to line. The last couple of miles. That's it. This is a, a warm stretch of the walk now. Warm enough for me to have taken my coat off and put it in my bag. This stretch of footpath, quite a good little stretch. Sort of a bit of tarmac along here and all that. Nice and solid underground. Not muddy or anything like that. Just a, just this little viewpoint. There you go. Over there, that's Portland. Don't know if you can see them just through the trees and some people. I think there's another viewpoint over there by the looks of it.
out somewhere along here. It's a bit of a viewpoint. Viewpoint out here, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. Oh, my yeah, guys. Could go down there a bit if you wanted to. Another one of those signs, danger beware on Sable Cliff Edge. Oh, absolutely stunning. Very nice indeed. Uh -huh. For a second when I saw all this water I did think have I am I still going right? Am I still following the proper footpath? Or have I somehow taken a slightly wrong turn? But no this is the footpath. And comes around here. Oh, <laughs> to a muddy bit. A little stream there. Oh, look. What a surprise. Staps. Ah, deep joy. Deep joy. Uh, so, as you can see, there's a public footpath way up there to a local feature called Chimney Rock. Rock formation that looks a bit like a chimney. Uh, I haven't quite got enough time to go up there to show you guys. So, I, I want to maximise the amount of time that I spend with my parents before driving back to pick my wife up from work so I'm gonna carry on walking along the coastal path so this little bit's another nice little bit I say guys we're almost at Lyme Regis now so not too far away See him there on the branch, a little robin red breast. Just sitting there quite happily. Oh, yeah, he's turning around. Off he goes, yeah, off he goes, yeah. Bless him. It's a lovely little bird. Oh, off he goes. Oh, yeah, he's gone. Ha <laughs> ha, Lime Regis cob. Just through the trees there.
just about to see the cob through the trees. Oh. And there it is. Oh, uh, uh, another week, about a week or so ago roughly, Amy and I went to see Wonka at the Cinema in Oval. It's a film about a young Willy Wonka when he's just setting out before he's got his factory, before he set the chocolate factory up. And the cob does make an appearance. So they've like used the cob like as a harbour area when he's on the boats coming in and all the rest. I mean, Lime Regis itself is not shown, they've sort of got a CGI port. But the cob itself, it makes an appearance. So yeah, if you watch Wonka, keep your eyes open for the cob. A nice little walk from Seaton to Lyme Regis along the Undercliffs. It's about well, best part of four hours that it's been for me to walk it with stops, recording, taking photographs, a bit of lunch, a little diversion down to the beach, and all the rest. So, yeah, I'd say if you want to do it yourself, it's going to be a good four hours or so, I reckon. So, three to four hours. But a lovely little walk indeed guys very enjoyable some beautiful views and all the rest and like i said a bit nippy at times but very enjoyable pretty dry underfoot so not too bad yeah it's been a lovely walk i've enjoyed doing it yeah it's been many many years since i've done it at last and yeah good fun but anyway guys thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed Look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, the usual, stay safe, take care, God bless.